My name is Kenneth Turner, and I'm a program officer at the Lemelson Foundation, where I focus on the foundation's developing country incubation portfolio. I want to introduce our next group of presentations from incredible inventors. Now I'd like to introduce Matt Callahan from One Breath, a current Vilgro incubatee and participant in Stanford Biodesign, who will share more about how his invention came to be. When he's finished, Maria Odin and Rebecca Richards Cordum from Rice University, who have been involved with Lemelson extensively, most notably as Lemelson MIT Sustainability Prize winners, will also present to us. Finally, we'll hear from Abhishek Sen, a Vilgro incubatee from Biosense. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Matt Callahan. Uh, as Kenneth said, uh, thanks, first of all, for being here. <clears throat> The Lemelson Foundation has uh, indirectly played a gigantic role uh, in, uh, in what was you know, my first entrepreneurship experience and my first company. Uh, a brief background on myself, and then we'll talk a little bit about, about One Breath. My name is Matt, and I trained as a physician in general surgery uh, prior to doing a fellowship in biodesign at Stanford. I've been out in California for all of my clinical training. Uh, I stayed on as faculty at the Department of Surgery, but before all of that, uh, I was actually in product design. And um, you know what I wanted to do when I was younger uh, was actually I wanted to build cars. Uh, and, I, and I moved from that into things. And I worked for a while uh, in consumer product design before I went back to medical school at the, the ripe old age of 26. Um, and I always wanted to come back into, into kind of making things, right? Uh, and, I, and I tried, you know, when I was a, a student and as a resident, you know, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, but as soon as I was cut loose uh, from training and had a chance, uh, you know, I, I found myself at Stanford in the biodesign group where essentially they gave you carte blanche and they said, you know, here's a team, uh, here's, you know, free, free reign of the hospital. Uh, see what you can do, and we follow a very clinical need-based uh, sort of invention process where we look first at the patient and the problem and then move on to solution rather than what, what you see a lot of times in, in biomedical engineering is, uh, you know, a hammer looking for a nail. Um, and that was how One Breath came to be, and, and you know, I'll tell you a little bit of the story of how it evolved over time to, to what it is today. So, you know, we started around the time that, uh, that the swine flu was uh, being uh, rumored to be an epidemic, and, and you know, of course, that, that never actually materialized. But uh, what it did do is it, is it uh, you know, uh, focused a bright light on protocol and on what, what we would do here in the United States in the event of a, of a mass casualty scenario or a, or a pandemic. Uh, and so, you know, this was on a, uh, the minds of a lot of people, including us at our hospital and at the VA Medical Center in San Francisco. And it turns out that the, um, you know, one of the biggest factors in treating patients that have influenza is, uh, is respiratory support, not necessarily uh, intravenous medication. There's going to be a human capital problem. I think we all recognize that in terms of physicians and, and, and nurses and staff. Uh, but when, when you look at what's going to take to get a patient, a critical patient with respiratory distress, through the worst of their illness, uh, it's mechanical ventilation. Uh, and the other thing that we noticed uh, was that these devices had sort of been ignored for a good 20 or 30 years since their invention. They had become essentially what we would consider legacy technology, and the cost had crept up to the point where it was capital equipment. And so we saw this as a problem and, and something that was you know, sort of irrelevant a, a with an immediate need in the United States, and we, we raised a small amount of grant funding, and, and some of it actually from a, a group called the NCIIA, which I believe is now uh, calls themselves Venture Well, and that was uh, a Lemelson-funded organization, and they gave us a little tiny seed grant to see if we could prove out the engineering and see if the platform worked. Um, and you know what? It did. Uh, and from there, you know, we, we designed the beginning of what has become One Breath. Now, there was then a change, a big evolution in the company when we shifted from being a, a, a project to a company. Uh, you know, federal contracts are nice, but obviously swine flu never became a real problem. So One Breath then actually shifted to looking at emerging market focus. And this has been a phenomenal experience for me. Uh, there's a real world need for devices like this, critical care medicine that's appropriate uh, for places like South Asia and the rest of the global south. And that's where One Breath has kind of evolved today. Uh, you know, we've gone through a, a Series A fundraise in 2014. We're looking forward to uh, entering the market in 2016, very early next year, actually. 
uh, and we've opened an office in Bangalore. We'll be doing our manufacturing in, uh, in Singapore. And, you know, I guess coming back to the story of, of how that's affected me, I mean, you know, as a physician, you, you, you don't expect to ever have to do these kinds of things. And, and the learning experience at each step of the way, from the invention to the IP, to the manufacturing, to the computer science and the software programming has been absolutely phenomenal. So. Uh, if anybody wants to learn more, we'll, we'll be outside today and tomorrow uh, with a booth in the hallway. So thank you very much.